What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. We have made it to the AFC Conference Championship here in the inaugural season of the SFL, narrowly beating out the Houston Oilers last week in a thriller 32-28 to 28 victory. Oilers Nation, you should be proud because that was a hard-fought game and you guys did not make it easy, but we narrowly escaped with the victory. And today, we take on two subscribers on the 9-8 and eight Salt Lake City Bisons who somehow <laughs> beat the number one seed San Diego Aviators last week. Cannot even believe that. 30-24. to 24. So Mason Buchanan, the quarterback, and Nico Petey, the halfback, got the best of subscribers. Cameron Moore, the quarterback, and Aiden Leslie, the running back. And whoever wins this game today, Bisons are the sixth seed, by the way. So shout out to Salt Lake City. You guys are making some noise here. Cinderella story for sure. But whoever wins today between us and the Bisons, has the not-so-honor and the not-so-privilege of taking on either Lamar Jackson on the San Antonio Voyagers or Patrick Mahomes on the Vancouver Huskies. Yay. Got two new subscribers joining the SFL today. Guys, we are up to 46 subscribers in the SFL. If you would like to join, playoffs are almost done, but we're starting a new season before Madden 25 comes out. So if you guys would like to join, please use the pinned comment down below. And also exciting news, we officially have a Discord server. I will link that uh, in the description below as well. You're gonna wanna use that if you're active here in the SFL because We'll have, you know, all the subscribers, what team they're on in there, what teams are available, uh, standings I'll probably put in there, all kinds of fun stuff. But the Discord will make it much, much more interactive and enjoyable, I think. So link to the Discord server down below. But today we have a first middle linebacker of the SFL. Love to see that. We got Zachary Nolan. Shout out at I am popular down there in the comments. 81 overall field general. 5'9", 185, a bit undersized, well, really undersized for a linebacker, but that doesn't really matter too much in Madden. He's 22 years old out of Texas, and good zone coverage with the 81, but with that 95 tackling, size doesn't matter, I guess. That's what she said. But Zachary, if he gets to you, he's bringing you down to the turf. No questions asked. And also joining Oilers Nation, who now has five subscribers on that team, so Oilers Nation, you guys, I think, should be tough next year. And first subscriber on the St. Louis Bulls here in the AFC East, formerly the Indianapolis Colts, we got Mr. Austin Kringle. Shout out at Wildcard9892 in the comments. And Austin here, it looks to be a pretty good back. 81 overall elusive back. He's got 84 total in elusive, so that's awesome. 5'8", 160, and again, just in case you guys don't know, 160 is the minimum weight that it allows you to put in Madden. So 5'8", uh, 160, 22-year-old rookie out of Buffalo, and Austin here has got the 94 speed to go along with the 96 juke. I know it says 94. He's playing down because of bad morale, probably because the Bulls aren't in the playoffs, but uh, they're actually in the Oilers <laughs> division. So I said AFC East. No, AFC South. My apologies. Don't know what I'm talking about there. But anyways, Austin looks like a ankle breaker. And nice to see somebody on a new team with the St. Louis Bulls. And we'll take a look and see what we're up against with the Salt Lake City Bisons here. We played them once earlier in the season. Beat them, I believe. And I want to say their defense is really good. But of course, we got subscriber Mason Buchanan here. Who got the best of Cameron Moore in that uh, divisional round playoff game and mason of course a six foot 180 pound quarterback out of michigan state the spartan and he is a very pretty a very accurate short range and he can throw on the run as well probably got good speed oh yeah 94 speed so we're gonna have to play him today and then assuming that we can beat him probably pat maybe have to play lamar jackson in the super bowl so lots of speedy speedy quarterbacks here but mason is a very good chef mason uh and got sam howell and Mitch Trubisky, the North Carolina quarterback room behind him. And then the other subscriber on this team who, checking in stats, this dude is a baller. He had tons of touchdowns. We uh, went over the stats last week and what do you have? 18 touchdowns maybe for on the season, 17. I can't remember, 
But Nico here is an elusive back, six foot 195 out of Colorado, and he's got 94 speed too, so speed all around on this Salt Lake City Bisons team. To go along with the 82 agility and the 82 carrying, Nico here is a baller. Garrett Wilson, number one wide receiver, and Devin Duvernay got Marvin Mims, DJ Chark, Dwayne Eskridge back there as well. And the Chief, David Njoku, that's right, it's coming back to me now. I know that Njoku tore us up in that regular season game that we played against him. Grant Calcaterra also there as well. And the offensive line, don't think it's that good. They got Rasheed Walker at left tackle, Ben Powers at left guard, Tyler Linderbaum, good center. So, okay, making up for the edge a little bit there. Ah, okay, Kevin Zietler, so it's decent, right? It's decent. Kevin Zietler is a good veteran, and uh, Marcus Cannon... A veteran don't know how good he is anymore but definitely a veteran and then quitty pay the left end to go along with micah parsons yep okay so there you go yannick and gakwe pretty good player as well but 11 from heaven or number 98 from the place that i hate gonna be giving us fits there and vita vea yeah so their defensive line is very good Malik harrison is the linebacker to go along with drew tranquil and Derek barnes as the mics Johnny Tavai, also a very good right linebacker as well. God, that one kind of stings. No Denzel Ward, not going to lie. But hey, how about Emmanuel Forbes? Shout out to my uh, St. Louis Sentinels franchise. He was an X-Factor, led the league in picks in that series. Go check it out if you never watched it. It's pretty good, I think. And uh, Jordan Lewis, Eli, Cooked Apple, the Ohio State Buckeye there as well. And then Jordan Whitehead, the free safety. That's a big loss. Talanoa Hufunga. Not going to play, nor P.J. Locke, so they're very thin at safety. And uh, Nick Folk, the veteran, kicking the ball away. Pat O'Donnell, the veteran, putting the ball away. And who will represent the AFC in the first ever SFL Super Bowl? We're about to find out. Should be a good one. Two uh, pretty evenly matched teams here. They got a really good defense. We got a pretty good offense that's kind of struggling as of late, I would say. And uh, one of these teams will have some subscribers in the Super Bowl. So if you guys are fired up and you're loving the SFL series so far, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also join the Discord. If you don't have Discord, get it. It's free. And that'll just make things so much easier. And uh, love interacting with you guys, man. And as you know, I'm pretty communicative and respond to all your guys' feedback and comments. So let's build this community up because we're about to blow this thing out of the water for the rest of this season and also come Madden 25 too. But got some business to take care of today. Without further ado, let's get on down to Thunderbirds Field in Toronto and get ready for the game. Love versus Buchanan. Who will emerge victorious today? Regardless of what happens, we are going to have some subscribers in the Super Bowl. So you got to love to see that. And should be a hard fought game, man. These Bisons, number six seed. I mean, Give them credit where credit's due. And I do see that the San Antonio Voyagers beat Patrick Mahomes and the Vancouver Huskies. And we did play the Voyagers in the regular season, and we did lose to them. They got Lamar Jackson, always tough to play against. So whoever wins this game, going to have their hands full in the bowl. You look at Buchanan here, 21 TDs, 12 picks, nearly 3,000 yards. And I would say that's very good because he did not join you know at the beginning of the season and i'm excited for next season because i already turned injuries off and i also turned uh, progressive fatigue off as well so we are going to get to see full season stats from our subscribers and it should be pretty fun garrett wilson with the direct handoff but there is matt milano there to wrestle him down for only a gain of one matt milano has been a freaking godsend ever since coming back from injury obviously not a subscriber i don't think unless he's randomly subscribed to my channel which i highly doubt and who in the heck they got an offensive lineman out there uh darian canard uh? oh yeah that's right because they only got two tight ends they got david njoku and grant calcaterra and the other one's hurt so interesting um they just had a big old lineman catch a pass and now Buchanan coming out with his receivers, and it's Najoku. Yeah, that was a common theme the last time we played him. Najoku picking up seven and a pretty clutch first down. Buchanan coming out empty now, so we are going to guess pass, of course. And Miles Garrett, he's been having... Ooh, oh, that could be a pick! Wasn't a pick, but it was good defense by DJ Reed. 
That was Nico Petey, the uh, subscriber running back out of Colorado, out there running a route. And I was eustered up on Garrett there. He had such a big, big game against that win versus Houston. And also Kyron Williams out there as well. If you guys remember, he was our running back to start the season. So this could be a pretty big revenge game for Kyron. And wide open there is Garrett Wilson. Jordan Poyer wrestles him down, but Mason Buchanan and these Bisons getting down the field with ease. Now Buchanan comes out single back with Petey behind him. It is going to be a pass, and I just can't take my eyes off that big offensive line, uh, offensive lineman. Kennard out there running routes, man. He, uh, he sticks out like a sore thumb out there, and I guess that's what happens when uh, you only got two tight ends, right? So Buchanan now coming out shotgun. It's going to be a give to Williams. No, it's not. It's going to be a Leonard Floyd sack, as a matter of fact, on the attack, breaking uh, Buchanan's back, talking a little smack. I don't know. Stop it. Get some help. Third and nine, and that's all I know. And it's a big down and distance here. Would love to get him off of the field. It'd be a long field goal, too, for Nick Folk. Not sure that he would even attempt it. I mean, definitely, you know, could, but uh, it's not going to matter because there is Devin Duvernay. Buchanan starting out hot, six for seven for 70 yards, getting this thing almost to the red zone. I think it's time we go a little press blitz. The sacks were on full display last week. Pause, and we need him to be on full display again today. Oh, look at Vaden. Jax Vaden, the corner out of Auburn. Oh, my God. He just freaking Superman dived. That was a great defensive play. Get a look at this again. There he is, number one brother of our D tackle Silas Vaden and that would have probably been six for Duvernay so shout out Jax Vaden making a heck heck of a play there I can intend we're coming out in our 4-3 and gonna continue to try to dial up some pressure Milano maybe he can get home to Buchanan and nope that's gonna be a Garrett Wilson touchdown isn't it it sure is okay so this happened last week against the Oilers as well they drew first blood and the Bison's going to draw first blood here. Mason Buchanan was nearly perfect on that drive. Only a couple incompletions. And all in all, the Bison's made it look pretty easy. So defense going to need to dial it up. Not too worried. You know, they, they did that in the Oilers game and uh, really gave Logan Thomas and the boys fits. But the question mark is me. <laughs> I'm the question mark. Jordan Love throwing picks. Nice return from Patrick Peterson. Wow. Almost getting it to the 40. Not even going to entertain the press. It hasn't been working, but the RPOs have. And when the RPOs haven't been, his outside run's been pretty good. Tubby McDouble, not the fastest guy, so that's why he's not able to uh, outrun Daryl Woolley there. But still, a pickup of five. I will certainly take that. Come on, shotgun here with uh, Kareem Hunt to our left. Tubby, did Tubby McDouble get hurt? He did get hurt, didn't he? Or did he come back? I'm not 100% sure check here uh no I th he's back i believe i don't think he's still hurt so uh definitely gonna be looking his way a lot but about scantling most recently has been the guy as he catches that pass from love for a gain of 11 and gets it almost to midfield another big question mark can we finally run the ball inside man i don't know because vita ve is here we've had to play dexter lawrence and the last week who did we play last week on the oilers aaron donald and now we got Vita Vea, so we've got some uh, big nose tackles that have been really, really making life tough for us. But I refuse to become one-dimensional, so I am still... We know Tubby can do it. He averaged almost 100 yards per game in the regular season. But the problem is just these big defensive tackles, as Vita Vea was right there in the vicinity. But we are able to pick up three. Coach is saying screen to Kareem Hunt. I think that's a good call. Five yards to gain. Kareem with good blockers, should be able to get this. And this could be four down territory as well. Not 100% sure. And, I mean, I just said if the blockers were there, there was no blocking there whatsoever as we were not even able to outrun Drew Tranquil. And the coach even says to go for it too. So, wasn't just me. Um, coach says go for it. We're going to go for it. This could be a risky, risky business here. I'm probably going to be looking for Zay Jones first. Or maybe Darren Waller on the drag. And nope. We're just going to get sacked and fumble the football. I think that was Vita Vea back there getting us. It was. was. And okay. So, uh, 
gifting the Bisons with great field position. Not how you want to start a game. And got to make sure we watch David Njoku there, number 85. Uh, that's illegal touching. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem when I drop out a uh, defensive lineman like that in coverage. I knew it was legal contact, so free first down for the Bisons. David Njoku is going to be the guy to watch today because, again, I, I remember, I feel like he had like a 80-something uh, yard bomb uh, in that last game we played against him, so I would love our subscriber D-Tackles to come up big, and there's Devin Duvernay. Tell you what, man, this team starting to see why they made it all the way to the AFC Championship. Yeah, a little scared here, guys. Uh, number 35, Nico Petey there in the backfield. Will he get it? He will, but McLeod is right there to meet him for a loss of one. That was a great defensive play by Ray Ray McLeod. And they're coming out zero wide receivers. So I got to dial up my little 60 out jacks blitz. This time Kyron Williams is in the backfield. So we'll see if it's just an inside run. It's going to be all oh, an end around. That was a fullback Roger Carter. But another loss to one. Our defense having this bend but don't break mentality. But now they are coming out shotgun. So cannot go 60 out jack splits on this one. I'm um, just going to hope that. Yeah, come on. Leonard Floyd. Oh, user lurk with the defensive end. Okay. Wow. So Leonard Floyd's got a sack and a pick. And that was all your boy here because I dropped him out in coverage. And he just telegraphed Mason Buchanan's pass there. Wow, how clutch was that? He was going to the Chief again, his favorite target. So now we got to make sure that we complement that with some points, please. Darren Waller's open. We're going to give it to him. Waller's got room to roam. Can he juke him, man? He kind of does. He's brought down there by Jordan Whitehead. But that was easily our best sequence of this game so far. Getting a pick and then getting a big chunk play downfield as well. First quarter is in the books. We're still scoreless, but we're knocking. And look at those passing yards from the Bisons, man. Mason Buchanan is lighting us up, but he does have that costly, costly interception. And let's just go back to draw from Tubby again. And same idea as last time. Let's run it right at Vita Vea and make him earn the contract. And looks like, uh, well, he's not going to be the one to do it, but... You also got Micah Parsons to deal with there on that side as well. So that is a pretty formidable defensive line. and uh, But still, I'm not going to go away from it. Going to keep feeding Tubby. But this one is going to be a little mesh spot here. Darren Waller was open. Probably should have held it for a bit longer and let him get more open. Now it's going to be a big third and six. Try screen again. Coach is calling it. Uh, last time we did this, did not work very well. But just need one block from our offensive lineman, please. I know we can do it, and this one looks to be a little better. There we go. Joe Tooney set a nice block, and Kareem Hunt is going to keep Jordan Love perfect and pick up the first down. And we are definitely in field goal range from Justin Tucker, but got to think about going score for score here. So maybe we hit uh, Waller on this little play action. Boom! Love is true. Had a little bit of zip on that thing. Jordan Waller going to be doing a little dance. Uh, he's making music videos now, so it's only fitting. And with three yards to go here, I do think we have to go through the air. Um, maybe Zay Jones gets open or just possibly Kareem Hunt. Come on, Kareem, fight. He caught it and fought, but only for a gain of one. That'll bring up third and goal. Little wide stick action from the two yard line. I like Zay Jones on these routes. He tends to get open. Oh, he's so open there. Bang. All right. So we knot things up, pending the extra point. That was a good answer and a good response, helping out our defense who got that crucial, crucial pick. Well, let's see if Buchanan's going to continue playing the way he has for most of this game. I would love to run those picks and or sacks up, but I got a feeling Buchanan's got a few tricks up his sleeve on this next drive. If he gets Petey, the running back involved, we haven't really called his name too much today. It is going to be a Petey run, and Petey is met there by Wagner. I do remember in the last game, too, that we played, we really shut down Nico Petey, which was good because I see him on these stats. You know, I check the stats at the end of every game, week after week, and I always see him with good games, but for some reason, we've been able to shut him down up until this point, and we're kind of continuing that again. Marcus Peters! With the perfect timing user pick. 
That is one thing in these playoffs, man. We have been getting interceptions on subscriber players. So we got six of them on Michael Yakin and the Austin Lumberjacks in the wild card round. And also against the Oilers, I think we had three on Lucas Thomas. So far, we got two on Mason Buchanan. So our, our corners, our DBs, they have been stepping up pretty good. But I've also been throwing them as well. So I think uh, winner of this game is going to come down to, oh, my God, Zay Jones. It's going to come down to Zay Jones, maybe. <laughs> How about Love 10 for 10 for 117? His best game of the playoffs so far. I was going to say it's going to come down to whatever team has the uh, least amount of turnovers, I would think, will probably be the team that emerges victorious, which that's usually how it works anyways, you know. Uh, if you take care of the ball, you tend to win games. And Kareem Hunt going to put the T-Birds up on the scoreboard for the first time today. Go ahead and do a little dance, do a little shimmy. Go ahead and do what you do, Kareem. We know what you do typically, and that is score touchdowns. Mason Buchanan, man, he may be uh, seeing ghosts out there. You know, boo. And he's going to need to really, really lock in here because he started out so hot, but he's starting to be careless with the football. And, oh, Nico Petey, good run up the gut from him. First time we've really called his name. Buchanan likes that one. He's going to pick up about nine on the play. Some linebackers in the gaps. We can also see the route, too. So I'll probably have Bobby Wagner kind of drop back here and there is miles garrett continuing his playoff tear he i mean he didn't have the greatest of regular seasons he was hurt for a little bit but even when he was healthy i mean he had some some okay plays now and again but he has come alive in these playoffs and i'm gonna have him just head all the way out here and watch up on david najoku off target pass there from the quarterback buchanan he had garrett wilson open but they are kind of starting to slide now. Not going to lie. They are starting to slide. And we got a chance to go up possibly 21-7. to We also are going to get the ball back after halftime as well. So depending on how we can manage this clock, I mean, we got a chance to really burst this thing wide open. I'll try to drain this clock a little bit. So we'll put it in the hands of Kareem Hunt. I'm not in any hurry here. And uh, need some blocks. We're going to be stopped there by Jelani Tavai. We're going to four. And Kareem starting out two for five. He really, oh my God, did he struggle in the last game that we played. That was his, I think he finished with negative six yards. It was probably his worst game of his career. Let's put Tubby on a wheel. See what uh, the linebackers do. He's open. We're going to Tubby. That was caught. Oh my God. I thought I was, I didn't know who had the ball. I thought it might have been a pick. But Tubby not really known for his pass catching prowess. That was a dot from Jordan Love. I'll tell you what, Jordan Love, he must have called uh, Aaron. I think him and Aaron Rodgers may have had a little ayahuasca journey in the, the week leading up to this game. Oh, Tubby still going. Look at Tubby. Oh, he's going to outrun everybody. Tubby freaking McDouble. You see the McDoubles raining down on your screen. That was a manly, manly run there. I thought he was down. I thought he was dead to rights. And we'll get a look at it on the replay here. Tubby shaking the tackle, spinning away from Jelani Tavai. They even had uh, Micah Parsons out there running, diving, trying to stop him. Tubby going to put us up 21-7. to seven. Bisons really need an answer here. If they don't score here, man, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've seen a lot of crazy things happen in these SFL playoffs, so I guess I won't really say anything. PD starting to get it going. He's breaking tackles left and right. Average of five yards per carry to start. So shout out to Nico PD, subscriber running back out of Colorado. And now the Bisons are going to hurry up. So got to be careful. I always, always get burned in these uh, scenarios here. Oh, it's Garrett again. Second sack of the game. Bison's still going to go hurry up. I was curious if they would. And we can also see that Najoku is going to be out here running an out route. It's going to be caught there by uh, Marvin Mims Jr., and third and ten, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they're going hurry up here. Going to be uh, Devin Duvernay on the seam route. And see if we can get to Buchanan again. We're going to. It's Miles Garrett. Three sacks for the reigning defensive player of the year in real life. He is coming. Him and our DBs, they are coming alive in these SFL playoffs. And Jordan Love coming alive in this game because he really hasn't played great. 
And we got a chance to maybe go down here and make it 28 or uh, possibly 24 to 7 before halftime. I'll see if we can get it done, boys. Uh, definitely time is on our side for sure. So let's see. I kind of like Kareem Hunt on the Texas. He hangs on to it. Go ahead and go down, Kareem. Call a timeout, and it's good first play of the drive. Ooh, Zay Jones is getting pressed too. So is MBS, and I kind of want to put Tubby on a streak. I really need that safety to drop down, which he did. Now, can we finally Damn. hit Zay? There we go. We're actually going to run up to the line and spike it here. I want to conserve that final timeout, but we have been trying to get Zay on that streak on the press. Oh, Jordan Love doing the crying. Okay. I see you, love. But we've been trying to find Zay on those uh, press situations for episode after episode. And finally, we're able to do it here in a key one. Tubby, I need you to get out of bounds. Wanted to get a little bit further. Does stop the clock. And, I mean, we're pretty much in Tucker field goal range. But need to make it a little bit. I would be, I would be confident. If we get this to like the 35 or something like that. So maybe, yeah, we're just going to go to Darren Waller. He'll actually get out of bounds anyways. And we actually got time for probably one end zone shot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's worth it to try, right? Kareem Hunt, I need you to block because Micah Parsons is on that side of the field. But we'll at least go ahead and try. We'll give MVS a chance. It's going to go out of the back of the end zone. It's fine. It's probably for the best. That's actually Jordan Love's first incomplete pass of... The afternoon, by the way. So Justin Tucker should be able to drill this one through. I mean, we got the slow down kick arc. He's best kicker in NFL history. He's going to do it no problem. 24 to 7. Bisons really, really need some kind of spark. Jordan Love playing like a man possessed. You love to see it. 24 7 is going to be the score going into halftime. And we are killing them on the ground, and we're also outpassing them. I mean, I feel like the Bisons had nearly, well, what did it say, 123 yards passing? I feel like they had that basically in the first quarter. And whoever wins this game gets the displeasure of taking on Lamar Jackson in the Super Bowl. And, I mean, what worked, it, what worked in the first half? Everything for us, really. But I feel like running it inside is going to be the game plan because we got to, you know, eat this clock Take father time out of the equation. We're also going to defend the medium pass because, you know, Buchanan's probably going to have to be playing hero ball and probably be having to air it out. Nick Folk going to boot this thing back, but, I mean, look, pedal to the metal. Going to be playing aggressive here because if we score here on the first play after halftime, might need to get the nightcap in the bedtime story because it might be Betty by time. And I mean, the formula here is simple, guys. Don't do anything crazy. Try to get the run game established. Although, hey, just remember, I made the focus well uh, running it inside. So uh. maybe Oxmall, no. It's going to be Tubby. I'm telling you, man. Tubby's a great back. I love him. But if he had just a little bit more speed, those outside runs on the RPO would be deadly. But here is where Tubby earns his bread and his butter on these uh, draw plays, and same idea as earlier. I'm going to run it right at Vita Vea. Why not? Because it seemed to work pretty well, and Tubby with some lanes. Oh, yeah, baby, averaging 7.8 yards per carry and that huge, huge touchdown earlier, keeping this drive alive, putting the pressure on the Bisons. And this is probably where I will have to throw a pass because... Last thing I want is to let these Bisons get back into it. So, going to be aggressive here. And we got Marquise Goodwin on the field. Don't often see him. Oh, Oxmall was getting open on the zig route. But the pressure was there for Love's second incompletion. And a big third and seven coming up now. And, uh, I mean, I'll tell you what. Zay Jones, if this uh, left linebacker doesn't make a move on him, which he did. Darren Waller is open. Aggressive catch that thing. Great defense there by Emmanuel Forbes. We had him there for a second. And maybe could have hit Zay Jones if I would have thrown it just a little bit sooner. So our opening drive is a big old stinker. And we're going to bring out Jack Mavros to boot this thing away. I got to up the pump power because there's no way. Oh, nice open field tackle there by us. But there's no way that he shouldn't be bombing these into, a, you know, touchback or a inside the 20 so probably gonna up the power on the punts next episode will buchanan be able to rally he's had a few first half mistakes 
We'll see if he's able to shake those off and get things going. It's going to be a play fake. There's Petey, who has been uh, out there in pass catching uh, territory quite often today. That's a good first down. That'll put Buchanan up to 158. And Nico getting into it with uh, our corner, DJ Reed, there. But, you know, this game is far from over. It's far from over. We're going to have Matt Milano kind of spy the middle of the field. Uh-oh, Devin Duvernay. Why is he even playing so good? Jax Vaden with the diving tackle, and this is what I was worried about. Okay, these Bisons are not done yet. And we got to now just pretend that the score is 0-0. Can't play conservative. Got to go for the kill shots if they're there because it's only a 10-point game and the Bisons just scored on two plays and we made it, they made it look very, very easy. Come out here, screen to Tubby. That has seemed to be working pretty well and Tubby definitely over 100 total yards for the game and need a good block from Tooney. It's there. Tubby trucks a man picking up about 11. That'll put Jordan Love over 200 yards. And the other Jordan, Jordan Whitehead, they're getting into it with McDouble. So things starting to get a little chippy here in Thunderbirds Field. And oh, we're going <laughs> to keep it that way. I'm fine with that. We we play good in those types of situations. Going to roll out with love. We actually have Zay Jones. That was nearly picked off. Wow. Little TE attack here. Let's see if we can roll out here. Micah Parsons is there. But uh, he is also matched up with Trent Williams, who is back in the lineup. Love to see that. Let's see if Love can get outside. He does get outside, and I will just go ahead and scramble with Love. Michael Parsons able to catch up to us, but hey, if you can use the wheels with your quarterback, you use the wheels with your quarterback. All right, T-Birds, come on now. Don't lose the luster that you had in the first half. We got the ball on the 50. That's picked. Yep. Yep. That sure is picked. I had tunnel vision on uh, MVS the whole entire time, and that's Daryl Woolley. And we're selling this one, boys. I'll tell you what. Love was near perfect until that. That's all me. I mean, I had no business throwing that. Maybe if I would have, like, lob past it or touch past it, but that's just me knowing that MVS almost always gets open on those routes. Was anybody else open? I, I seem like things were pretty locked down. Yeah, I mean, all the routes were pretty much locked down in my defense. Darren Waller or uh, Logan Thomas wouldn't have been able to get it. So, so I guess, you know, I think that one had disaster written all over it. How about these Bisons rallying back in this game? And they got a chance to make it a one-score game again here. So he will give it to Petey. Petey's going to be shut down there by multiple Thunderbirds. I think Brandon Graham was the first one to get to him. For a nice loss of three. So it's a third and long. Great down and distance for us. And all we really got to do is just play good. Lockdown zone coverage here. And hopefully get the ball back. And uh, kind of bail out Jordan Love. Who really, really messed up. Letting him into this position. Okay. Give me some cookies. It's Jordan Poyer. And I know you see it up there on your screen, ladies and gents. Perfect timing. User pick. Second of the game. We had that user lurk earlier with Leonard Floyd, and that was a perfect timing user pick by me for Jordan Poyer. And Buchanan has three picks in this one. That was a chance. That, that could have been a dagger right there. That was a chance for these Bisons to really put the pressure on us. And luckily, our defense is able to bail us out. And let's just go underneath to Zay Jones. Going to pick up a first down. Nice gain of 10. Thunderbirds now trying to put a drive together. In a situation like this, as I mentioned earlier, we can't be conservative. Uh, the quarter is playing off of Zay Jones, so he might be able to get open on the slant. We're going to go underneath to him. That was risky, risky business as uh, Lewis was right there. And that's going to bring up third and seven. Yeah, this is pretty much it here. I need Darren Waller to go streaking, and we're going to have Kareem Hunt block. Uh, we got some slants working, so maybe somebody like Oxmo can we, Thank you. we get it to him? Look at Mike on the diving catch. Subscriber at Rams fan. First catch of the game, but man, oh man, was that a tough one. And we really needed that. Jordan Love was about to get drilled by Micah Parsons. Led him a little bit too far, but Oxmo sacrificing his body to make a nice nice play let's go back to the draw with tubby and again the formula that has worked 
running it right at Vita Vea, and uh, Jelani Tavai is the one giving us fits, but Tubby, <laughs> giving it his best effort, should have been stopped maybe for a, lot, for a gain of nothing, was able to pick up three. We're going to send Zay up the seam here, might actually be my first read. Not, we got Thomas on the drag. Yeah, it's Zay. Okay, there we go. Zay Jones having a great game. Curious to see what he's at for receiving yards. Got to be up close to 100 or maybe even over. They're not going to show me, are they? Maybe, come on. Yeah, five for 101. So thank you for suiting up and showing up. Also, I know you see very Aaron Rodgers-esque throw from Jordan Love there. This is more like it. Let's have uh, Tubby just follow Kyle Juszczyk. Going to run it away from Micah Parsons as well. Tubby might have it. Oh, stonewalled at the one-yard line, but he is very close to 100 yards now. Daryl Woolley was able to get us, and we'll see. Uh, let's give it to Tubby on the inside zone from the shotgun and see if he can finish the job here. I may be cutting back to the left. Oh, God, nobody wanted to block Drew Tranquil there. He was able to stop us for a loss of three. Now, in this situation, I'm okay with three. Don't really want it, but I'm okay with this. Let's see what happens here. Zay, precision pass from Love. And Zay freaking Jones is our MVP in this one. That was not an easy pass, nor an easy catch. Jordan Love had to thread the needle. Players are getting punched out there. I love it. It's SFL playoff football. I know you guys love it too. But Jordan Love had to thread the needle. Zay Jones had to absorb contact. Both of those things were done. And we now got a nice cushion going up 31 to 14. 27 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Let's see what the Bison's got. They've... They've gotten close, man. They've definitely uh, left some points on the field. It's going to be Petey. Oh, tried to hawk him down with Milano. Petey running with force, getting to the second level. Going to be stopped there by Antoine Winfield. But uh, the Bisons have left some points on the field. This one could easily be, you know, neck and neck ball game. And even though it's 31-14, we still got a lot of time left. See if Buchanan snaps this ball. He will not. So that is going to take us to the fourth quarter here. Passing yards starting to get... A little more even. We're still dominating on the ground. And right now, it is a two-score ball game. So, you know, actually a three-score ball game. Yeah, it's a three-score ball game. Even two touchdowns and two two-point conversions would only make it 31-30. to 30. So we are in a very good uh, position here. But just can't become complacent. Can't rest on our laurels. Miles Garrett, can you get your fourth sack of the game? Oh, what? how did Devin DuVernay catch that? I thought Patrick Peterson was going to have the pick. Or Garrett the sack. And somehow the Bisons convert. Garrett almost had his four sack. He is hungry. He came to play today. Hoping that he can uh, elevate, you know, some of our subscriber D tackles there. Silas Vaden, Jay Monstro. Because I would love to get them some nice playoff stats. There's Vaden. So close. And it's Garrett Wilson. So these uh, pesky, pesky Bisons just not going away. Combination of Garrett Wilson and Devin Duvernay. Has been pretty deadly today. 16 yards to go. I mean, if the Bison score here, I mean, I still think they got a pretty, pretty big hill to climb, but it'll make it a lot more interesting. There's that uh, that offensive lineman there, to Darian Kennard. That's so funny seeing him out there. He's got two catches, though, you know, so more catches in this game than most offensive linemen have in a single season. So, I mean, there's that for whatever that's worth. Take that for what it's worth. Buchanan might do it with his legs. Leonard Floyd there, but Buchanan picks up eight. Most importantly, a fresh set of downs. Thinking the Bisons might score on this one, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, maybe not. But Winfield needs you to man the middle of the field. Oh, it's a sack there by Milano. I cannot say enough about this guy, man. I literally forgot he was on our team because I had pre-existing injuries on. Of course, he was injured from uh, from Buffalo, and he didn't play a single snap all season, but comes back in the playoffs hungry. Oh, Leonard Floyd. Look at that, man. Move this guy to safety. He has had some clutch, clutch plays today and has had the soft hands. He almost uh, <laughs> had a pick there. Would have been his second of the game. But give it up for Leonard Floyd. He has come to play. And Buchanan got a crash on him. He can't run. Wouldn't have done any good there. And uh, very curious if Andy Reid, this is the former Chiefs, 
Bisons, of course, being in the AFC West. Yeah, I was going to say they got to go for it. I mean, there's really no other choice. And if they don't get this, I may be doing some long cuts because we will definitely be trying to uh, just kill the clock. You can. He, yeah, he can't run. There's Vaden. There's Vaden, number 99. Did not get the sack, but quite possibly just ensured us a ticket to the Super Bowl. And we'll have to see how the last uh, seven or so minutes of this game goes. But right now we're fighting father time, as we tend to do in a lot of these games. Third and six here. Want to pick this one up for sure. Um, Kareem Hunt, he might be going streaking. Little indecent exposure over there. Nope, but we will go underneath to Oxmall. And how about these subscribers pretty much wrapping this game up. Silas Vaden with the big almost sack. Mike Oxmall with... That diving catch earlier and a first down there, which all but assures our victory. And uh, this one, it looked like it might be tight there for a while, especially early on. But the story of today's game and quite possibly the SFL playoffs, as Tubby goes over 100, very nice, is our defense. Our corners coming up getting picks. Our defensive line and our linebackers getting sacks. Matt Milano. Uh, in this game, Jordan Love, he had that one, you know, boneheaded pick earlier by me, but he has definitely limited, limited the mistakes. Tubby coming alive, getting back over 100 again, doing what he does right there. And unless something goes completely awry, we are going to be taking on Lamar Jackson and the San Antonio Voyagers who beat us earlier in the season in the first ever SFL Super Bowl. Tubby, 23 rushes for 132 yards and a touchdown. He has been... An absolute difference maker in this one. And that is going to seal the deal. 31 to 14. I mean, that was a, that was just a great display by these Thunderbirds. Tubby's still going too. This is his best game in quite some time, man. Clap it up for Tubby McDouble. And clap it up for these Thunderbirds. We're gonna be moving on to the first ever Super Bowl of the SFL. Andy Reid gonna throw his clipboard. Cannot wait for some new. And also, man, my man's got some junk in the trunk there. Wow. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. But cannot wait for some new uh, post-game celebrations in Madden 25 because I'm getting a little tired of seeing the clipboard get thrown and everything else that we're used to seeing. But taking a look at the stats here, Mason Buchanan, 269, two touchdowns, but those three interceptions, very, very costly. Jordan Love played pretty good, all things considered. Did have that one pick, yes, but... 80% completion, almost 300 yards, two touchdowns. That was nice to see. But here's the MVP. I mean, aside from our defense as a whole, Tubby McDouble, 24 carries, 137 yards. So he was a workforce today, averaged 5.7 yards per carry. And Nico Petey, I mean, I don't know why they didn't use him more, man. Like, aver he averaged more yards per carry than Tubby, 5.8. And especially once Buchanan started throwing the picks there, I would have really went to PD more. But for whatever reason, they just decided not to do it. And uh, Devin Duvernay, though, wow, great game from him. But also Zay Jones, 105 receiving yards and two touchdowns. And then, of course, subscriber Mike Oxmall, four for 34. But don't let the stats fool you. He had some big, big catches. Miles Garrett, three sacks. Wow, he played awesome. And uh, also Jelani Tavai, Drew Tranquil, they were all over the place. But getting a look at our subscriber defenders. Do they have, they should have some stats in here. Um, I'm not seeing them. No, I guess they didn't. I mean, I know Jax Vaden, he had that diving. He should have a pass deflection at least. Why is he uh, not showing up on the stats here? He should have a pass deflection. I guess nobody, none of the subscribers had any tackles or anything, but... Um, whatever. I know Silas had that almost sack that forced the throw away. I know Jax Vaden had that diving deflection that's not showing up on the stats, but it is what it is, man. What a way to finish off the season. And we are going to have to prep for Lamar Jackson and the San Antonio Voyagers. Fun, fun stuff. Always love playing them. Psych. Uh, but still, should be prepped, primed, and ready for a very, very fun Super Bowl. And how about the T-Birds getting to the Super Bowl in our very first season? Love to see it. Shout out to all the subscribers on the Thunderbirds and around the league as well. Remember, check out the Discord. Link is in the description. We are almost here in season number two. 
So that means we will have full season stats, and I need you guys to stay interactive, you know, talk to me, let me know what you want to see, what you want me to do, and as you can see now, I respond, you know, pretty well to stuff like that, but wow, that is going to do it for me tonight, guys, but as always, I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.